representatives. You can search for the Republican uh, representative in your state and other states as well. Uh, we'll go ahead and continue to Randallin. Mm -hmm. Next, yes. in the queue. go ahead. Thank you. I'm kind of glad that you went ahead of me because I'm trying to compose myself. I mean, if, if even a remote part that you have to experience just me right now, just paying attention and just knowing this really shifted my listening. I never had my daughter and had to worry about her going outside. So just let it be known that this really has shifted my awareness. And I'm so sorry. And um, I, I'm listening in a way I never listened before. I've never been racist, but now I have been, I'm anti-racist and I never really got that. I really never got that. I never participated in any racist conversation, but now I do. Now I do in a sense that I have a conversation in a, in a respectful manner as to why someone feels that way, to turn them and get them, like I never got this world. And I'm just, I just wanna say my condolences and I really do think that the sacrifice is really going to change the world. And even if, and I don't want to even put this out there, but if the laws don't make it through for what happened with George, that's crazy. And if it doesn't, I still think it has shifted so much listening of a white person. And I will vote. And I will have the conversations. And I do have a recommendation that maybe if you can put some of those things in your, one of your profiles for the list of the, of, you know, the .gov and any other thing so we can grab it. And I just want to say, I'm sorry, my condolences, my love goes out to the family and his daughter. And I just know that there's been a difference and I never understood the white privilege um, in the set in the way that I do now. So. I will take advantage of my white privilege. Thank you for that, Randall. And I thank, appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it too. Uh, you know, uh, similar to what you just said, uh, I went to uh, a car lot to get my uh, truck serviced, and it was a guy, he didn't know me, who I was. He just seen the mask that I had on. And he just broke down and he started crying. It was an older man, older Caucasian guy. And he told me, he said, Minnesota, I thought it was liberal. He said, I just don't understand what this world is coming to. And he just had tears in his eyes when he was talking to me. And I said, man, it's, you have good people in this world, but one person can mess it up for a lot of people. They say one apple can spoil a bunch of apples, one bad apple. I thank you so much for what you're doing. And the fight is with you, too. You can get out and you can walk with us, march with us, uh, get out and help change these laws. Uh, do the same thing. Get get in contact with your representative because we're standing together with stronger in numbers. All we need is people with hearts like yours. I will. Thank you. And again, I'm, I'm sorry that you ever have to even think about this one more second and that you're what you have to do every day, but you really are the difference. Like now you're who's left to make the difference. And I'm sorry that that weight is on you. And so, of course, anybody outside of you that can help support you with that. I just pray for it to be expanded. Thank you so much. We just and bring awareness to the, what's going on in this world. Um, like I said once before, we can do this. All we had to do is just speak it into existence. We will be covered by the blood. Amen. Philonis, you just said something, my brother, that um, that last statement you made, it got to me. Um, for those of y'all that don't know, I used to be an atheist several years ago and I converted to Christianity and you said we'll be covered by the blood man one of the things that I've often talked about on this app is that the black church hadn't done enough for us and uh, that black people are abandoning the blood 
in the search of other forms of spirituality, religion, all these other isms. My belief is that we were never more powerful when we were centered on Jesus, right? When you look at the civil rights movement, you look at that, you know, you can say that Christianity was the white man's religion, even though science and even the historical analysis proves that it wasn't. The question I have for you, my brother, is, you know, what keeps you centered on that? What, how, how do you maintain that in the face of such consistent opposition to that, to that, to that gospel? I've seen the wonderful works of God. I have experienced it. Not only that, I have a beautiful wife who's by my side and she's there with me telling me we can't quit now. We got to get 10 steps ahead, if not 30. And every time I say, have we reached that point? She always tell me, no, we can never reach that point. We're going to be doing this forever. And I always say, that's why I married you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, Simon. Thank you so much for having me and for inviting me on stage. I'm just humbled to be here with all of you. Uh, I'm from Kenya. I live in Seattle, Washington. And uh, like many of you in this room, I saw on our screens what happened. And I was out in the street also doing what I could do but it's not enough, you know, uh, it's not enough because what happened changed the whole world and was able to, to really show people how, 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 how we can be really like wild animals if we have no love in our hearts. And, um, you know, just listening to you, Philonis, and your wife just reminds me of how much love you have in your hearts. And, and I just hope that you know that all of us in this room just want to pour more love and fill your cup with love because no matter what we do, the gift that we can give you and also to your family for sacrificing and what happened is a lesson to the entire human race. Uh, as a result, there were protests everywhere. My family in Kenya were calling me and asking whether I was safe, you know. And um, I am married to a white woman and I have kids uh, from that marriage. And what I, I taught them in that moment about what was going on and what I teach them uh, now, only God knows but we have a responsibility to take care of each other as human beings. But we know that the lives of black people in the world, not just here in the US, is not respected. And we just have a lot of work. For those of, who, for those of us who are not African, uh, of African descent, there's even much more work of 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 building trust with 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 african people globally because people live in fear you know and we all know that most spaces in this world are designated white spaces if you think about apartheid here in america we live in an active apartheid regime it's just not implemented openly but when you see what happened you know that we live in an apartheid regime. But only love, the love that our ancestors uh, gave to one another that helped them overcome slavery, colonization, and the, the siphoning of resources from our, our bodies and, and, and the continent, we've seen it. And we, we have to come together as a people, but we also, we just have to keep there's no shortcut. We have to keep working on this. It's 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 very scary for me as a man to even to to walk and and feel free anymore. I'm always, uh, 
you know, ready to run or ready to defend myself. I don't feel free because I know the regime under which I live in. And uh, until something like this happens, the world could have still been sleeping. So this was a teaching moment for the entire world. And I just want to thank you and your family for, 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 for being the teachers in this moment and also for continuing to live in that, in that light and in that love that you continue living. And whatever you need us to do, we will do it because we are, we are at your service. This is Simon. I'm grateful to be here. Thank you so much. Oh man, you you spoke well, man. I'm just just thinking about everything that you just said. We all are brothers and sisters. And the world had to had they had it had to be waking up because people will sleep and every time you look up, something happens, they sweep it up under the rug. But this particular incident, what we seen in this video. This is something, no matter what part of this world, no matter where you at, you have to be sleeping on the rock to not know that what they seen in that video was wrong. And Kenya, uh, I'm trying to think of the other Ghana. place, Ghana. Ghana sent me a video. They also played it for my brother, and they were asking for anybody that wanted to come back to Africa. They were willing to accept anybody because they said that where we're living is not for us. But for somebody to make that particular uh, 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 impact on this world and say that to say something like that, that powerful, it, it shows you how people think. And living here, if this place is not for us, where should we be? Go where can we go? Agreed. Um, moving on, uh, Delana, did you have something? Uh, no, I was just, I was just clapping in agreement um, with that statement. I, I it, it deserved a minute of pause just now. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> Hello. Uh, first and foremost, thank you so much, uh, moderators. Um, and Mr. Uh, and Mrs. Floyd, uh, I just want to first set a foundation by saying that uh, George Floyd, the life, uh, the life, the legacy, uh, the movement of George Floyd changed my life and it has changed my life forever. I'm an opera singer turned activist, an opera singer turned community organizer, an opera singer turned fighter and lover of people forever. Um, your your encouragement um, and your uh, power to get through this uh, has inspired me, uh, Mr. Floyd. What I want to know is, um, living living in America as a black as a black man as a black boy, how do we stay encouraged living in such a oppressive uh, system? And very quick, Philomus, before you answer that, is everyone on the stage all right with me posting the audio of this conversation to YouTube? Is everyone okay with that? Because a, a lot of Android users don't have access to Clubhouse yet. A lot of people that have iPhones are not even on Clubhouse yet. But I think the content of this conversation deserves to go on a, uh, a, a larger platform. Is everyone all right with that? Yes. Yep. Yep. yes. I agree. And I want to go further even That's saying fine. if you choose yeah, to come it. up and ask the question. Okay, I'm going to go for it and even say if you choose to come on stage to ask the question that you are in agreement uh, with this recording. Again, uh, for those who are just now joining and uh, you haven't heard the previous conversation, um, if you do come up stage, we just ask that you be respectful and again, you will be recorded. Um, we can continue in queue. Um, Tuffy, you're next. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, moderators, for having me up here. And thank you, Mr. Floyd, for being here today. I just want to start by saying I'm incredibly sorry for what your families had to endure. And I send you my condolences. Um, my question for you today has to do with 
Um, this past summer, and of course what happened, it went all around the world, and the Black Lives Matter movement went global. Tuffy, your audio is very light. Can you speak into your mic, please? You guys, can you guys hear me now? That's 10 times better, yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So my question for you, Mr. Floyd, is um, your niece became a little bit of a symbol um, of this movement this past summer. And in some ways, I think that's great because a lot of times in these occurrences, even when there is a video, a lot of times you don't see the families affected and the people affected um, on a deep level. So she was featured in interviews and she was... There were, there were photos of her all over the place. Was, was there at any point, um, did that ever make you uncomfortable or cause you, did you have any feelings about the fact that she was had become a symbol of this movement when of course she's a small child and this is a horrible thing that's happened and, and it's turned into a global thing? How did you feel about your niece becoming a symbol in this movement? I was happy, I was ecstatic. Uh, every time that I, I speak with her, uh, she's always willing to do anything and everything and beyond for her uncle. Uh, you have to understand, my niece, uh, she's like uh, at the top of her class. She plays every sport. She's taller than me. The things that she she does so much in the community now before George, you know, his demise. So the thing what I can say about my niece is for her at the age that she's at, she's showing older people and her younger peers that they need to step up and fight because if they don't fight, their lives can be taken away from them too. And that's the point. Thank that's you, the Dollar. You next. Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, Dolly. You got a brother. Go Dolly. Ahead. All right, we're gonna move on to Dr. Faustina. I'm sorry if I murdered your name. You can correct. Yes. <clears throat> Hi. Yeah. Thank you so much for this space, and I am so sorry. And my condolences to you and your family, Mister Philonis. I have been mortified by this experience. And like many have said, my life has changed, you know, forever for what happened. And it's just the magnitude, the, the visuals that the experience created in my mind that I cannot believe that someone could be so inhumane to do what he did to our brother. It reminds me of the US Supreme Court when a verdict was passed that Dred Scott was not fully human. He was less than human because he was black. And that same image that happened 1857 persists today in the 21st century. It is a shame. My take on this is how can we as a group unite and be self-sufficient in our community because the same thing continues to happen to us. It was 30 years ago that Latasha Harlins was killed over a drink in a store, a neighborhood store. Why do we continue to go to places where we are treated with ignominy? We have the resources to have our stores in our communities. I know sometimes when we're driving around, we have to go to stores, some stores, but I tell you, I am very mindful what store I go to, especially when I leave my community and even around my community. 
I'm very mindful. We need, my, my suggestion is, we need to try to stay away from mom and pop's businesses that, that um, you know, have historically killed African-Americans or mistreat Af African-Americans. You need to know, we need to know, we need to be aware of our environments and places we are going. Yes, we shouldn't be afraid, but yes, we should be afraid. It sounds contradicting, but yes, we should be afraid. I have a 14 year old boy that I am so scared to allow to leave the house unsupervised, even to walk around the neighborhood, which is predominantly white. So my question, my question is, have the store owners reached out to you since his death because they caused his demise? What they did was uncalled for. Thank you. This is Dr. Faustina. I'm done speaking. Hey, Mr. Floyd, uh, I, I, I don't want to. Go ahead. Uh, we're we're going to let you uh, go ahead, uh, Flonius. You can answer that if you can. <laughs> yeah, it's like I really, I really uh, can't answer that one. But uh, when she was telling me about her son and what, what she thought about everything, the biggest thing we can do is educate and bring awareness to the communities that we live in. That's the biggest step that we can take because you have to build the relationship with the police officers. Also, with the government officials, you also have to build a relationship with to get them uh, to make them aware of, of what you want, because there's a lot of people who want to do what you want to do, but they don't know how to. So if you can educate, that'll be big and that can help bring change to this world. I do have a, a question, though, Felonius. I, we had heard that um, the neighborhood in where George uh, was killed, that there was um you know, money given from your family to help improve that neighborhood. Uh, can you confirm that? And has there been, um, you know, any other uh, contributions made to help that area that we may not be aware of? So, yes, um, this is Keita Floyd. We did donate $500,000 to the neighborhood um, just to give back. A lot of those business owners, um, they don't have the business that they used to have, you know, because the street is now become a memorial. And so the traffic is not there, the community, you know, um, or the people, the, the supporters that would go in, the consumers go in and buy, they're not there. And so we want to make sure that those businesses stayed alive. A lot of them are um, of African-American owners. And so we just want to make sure that we gave back to the community. Not just for they can uh, uh, survive, so they can thrive through and, and just keep pushing. Because hey, those people in that area, it's a lot of African-American people who have businesses and we went and I shook hands and spoke with each and every one of them that I had the opportunity that day to speak with. And they all said the same thing. They gave me condolences for my brother, but they appreciate what I did for them and for me coming, just coming there and them having the opportunity to speak with me. They said it was a blessing because they say people don't speak out. They just would go silent. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, I want to turn the... Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Michelle. I apologize. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I want to turn the table to someone who uh, has, has quite often spoken on this. I was trying to get her in the room earlier, uh, but Portia Bell uh, is a good friend of mine. Uh, then... then uh, with Portia since uh, Portia, I think your room was the first room on Clubhouse that I ever joined. And Portia has spoken ad nauseum about, you know, white supremacy, uh, various issues regarding, um, you know, the not only not just the death of George Floyd in particular, but the entire black plight and the black issue in the United States. And I wanted to personally take this opportunity to ask. Um, Portia, if she had anything that she would want to ask um, 
um, Mr. Floyd or his wife, um, because I think this is a great opportunity to have just an increased dialogue uh, while we have this brother and his wife available to us as well. And, and just to remind everyone really quickly as well, if you would, uh, please ping people into this room. Please continue uh, to, to do so. Uh, Portia, if you have anything, uh, feel free. If not, then we'll just go back to the queue uh, and Mashari can take it over from there. Thank you, uh, Dr. Julio and every, hey Delano and everyone on the stage. Um, and also Mr. Floyd and your wife. Um, it's, it's actually an honor to be able to have you guys on the stage right now. So doc, thank you, Dr. Julio, for putting this together. And thank you, uh, Mr. Floyd. And I don't want to say your name wrong, because uh, I want to introduce myself to your wife. Is Which one is your wife? I'm sorry. <laughs> so my name is um, Keita Floyd. Oh, Keita Floyd. OK, awesome. Uh, Keita Floyd, I'm Portia. So, uh, so awesome uh, to have you here. Um, well, first and foremost, um, as unfortunate as it may, uh, as it is, um, what happened to Floyd, which I'm so deeply sorry, I have absolutely no words that can be, you know, put together to just express just how sorry I am. I will say that um, it has, he has changed the world. Um, I, I've seen the transition. Um ever since his death did take place and we are, I am, I'm so grateful. And I just want, I guess the only question that I have um, is I just want to be sure that you guys have gotten the support that you deserve in terms of, um, you know, just from different organizations. I just want to, cause there's been just a lot of narratives and stories from organizations that, have um, been, you know, pretty much chasing the story, but not being in support, um, i.e., you know, BL, BLM organization, Black Lives I had an incoming call organization who's not, who have not been in full support. Uh, we've had um, other people have held spaces for people for Botham, the Botham family members are on this app. Um, Jamel Roberson, family members are on this app and uh, they have spoken um, about how they, you know, a lot of times they've, they've experienced where these organizations do not put them in the forefront of, um, of their families in the forefront of the conversations and just kind of leveraging and taking it as an opportunity to make to make money. And I just want to be sure, have you guys um, gotten any support or have you found any difficulties with organizations not thinking if you guys are using hashtag or, or and not, um, I guess, getting a percentage of that money, which is well deserving um, whenever they, they're using uh, George Floyd's name. And I just wanted you guys to speak to that and I'm done speaking. Uh, without going too far into it, as of right now, we have not received anything um, outside of the same things that you have noticed, which is the hashtags. We have not received anything from um, um, directly from organizations. Um, if they would like to donate, we do have an institute. It's called the Falonis and Keita Floyd Institute for Social Change. They're more than welcome to um, mail us a donation or, or request to have conversations with us or an interview with us. Uh, they can use P.O. Box 432, Missouri City, Texas, 77477. If they would like to just sit and have conversations, they can email us at kbrownfloyd at thelonisandkeetafloydinstitute.com. Oh, that was that was actually absolutely, absolutely amazing. Is there any way you could put that information in your bio so people that had a hard time capturing that um, can take a look at it really quick or take a screenshot of it if they wanted to donate or send something to the P.O. box? Because I just wanted to to make note of that because I wanted for the sake of the audience, want them to be aware that whenever they are printing shirts of the victims and sharing hats, hashtags, to keep in mind that these families are probably not receiving anything and we want to be there and be in support of you guys without leveraging off of a story. So that's just really important to me. And I just want the audience to be made aware of that. So thank you for, for confirming that. And if you have any way to put it in your bio right now, so the audience members can take a look at that so we can be in support of the family of you guys, 
that would be really, really awesome. And I'm done speaking. Thank you. And Felonis, I, I, I want to ask my brother, I, I don't want to keep you longer than necessary. I don't want to don't want to overstay our welcome to, you know, with, with, with your time. About how much time do you have left uh, for us, uh, my, my brother? More minutes about 20 more minutes 20 more minutes okay um that being said mishari where are we at currently in the queue um i believe it is is it i don't want to say his name or is it dicey the ice uh 